Hi everyone, welcome to Professor Orthodontics, your online classroom to understanding orthodontics in simpler terms. So today we'll be learning about transpalatal arch, also called as Goshkarian appliance. It was given by Robert Goshkarian for the first time. So there are different kinds of transpalatal arches, there are different modifications. Today we'll try to cover up all that we can in 20 to 30 minutes. So let's get started. Today we'll be talking about the uses of transpalatal arch or TPA. The main utilization when it comes to transpalatal arch is usually with respect to anchorage. But is it really worth it? Does it actually give you sufficient amount of anchorage? We'll discuss that in detail. We'll also discuss the Zacharyson type of palatal arch, which is a modification of regular Goshkarian transpalatal arch and the other advantages and disadvantages of the TPA. We'll also learn a little about what do articles and some significant publications uh, conclude about transpalatal arch. This is going to be a very interesting presentation. I hope you like it. Okay, I've damaged the slide quite a lot, but you're getting the picture. Um, so according to Ricketts, if you draw a line right from the cuspal tip, of the disto buccal cusp and the mesio palatal cusp over here yeah. yes so what you get is a line right you get a straight line let me use another pen yeah so what you get is a straight line correct and when you extend this straight line anteriorly like this is not exactly straight but you're getting the point right so say you extend it anteriorly a straight line with the help of a ruler and a scale not like this not freehand but say you keep a ruler and you draw a line this end this free end should lie on the distal half of the canine of the maxi canine we don't have a maxi canine here and this is a mixed dentition but yeah say the ideally the canine should be somewhere here say this was a canine and if the, if it was a canine over here god it's not how i want to draw it but if it was a ideally located ideally positioned non-rotator maxillary molar this this line would be instead passing this way that is it should be passing along the distal third of the maxillary canine similarly on the other side if you have a canine like this and if you draw the same line over here so you should in this case in this case it's not really rotated so it's almost passing along the ideal but in this case on the left you can see that the right maxillary molar needs derotation because this line is very much far from the distal third of the maxillary canine region so by comparing the location of the this line uh, with the location of the distal third of the maxillary canine you can figure out if the mandibular maxillary molar is rotated or not and yes for that first of all you should have a maxillary canine present and assuming that the maxillary canine is not in any crowding or spacing okay then you can use a maxillary canine as a guide so so we are back to the, uh, the whole uh, application of transpalatal arch. So we are done with the transverse application of the transpalatal arch. We are done with the anteroposterior application. Now we go to the vertical plane. Is transpalatal arch useful in the vertical plane? Yes, it is useful in the vertical plane because what happens is the distal loop of the TPA. Now let me draw the TPA. We know this is the TPA. Yeah, and this is the molar attachment going within the molar yeah so we have maxillary molar on one side maxillary molar on the other side okay so when you have a mesial end of the transpalatal arch the mesial loop of the transpalatal arch so this loop is directed distally when the tongue makes contact with the distal uh, with the distally directed loop it exerts an intrusive force on the maxillary molar hence you're avoiding extrusion 
okay that is when the appliance is passive but when the same appliance is instead of being one to two millimeter away from the palatal surface it is at least five mm away from the palatal surface you are creating increased distance between the palatal vault and the loop of the tpa by doing this every time the tongue makes contact within the with the tpa so tongue exerts forces it is exerting intrusive force because we know that the gap between the TPA and the palatal surface is 5 mm. So it's exerting an intrusive force on the molars. These are just modifications of transpalatal arch. You can see here, this is an example of a, a bonded TPA. Yeah, it's a combination of many things. First of all, it's a bonded TPA and the TPA is bonded. You can see here with the help of a composite is bonded on the premolar. But at the same time, we know that the TPA is not enough for a critical anchorage case. This ha has to be a critical anchorage case because in this, we can see that uh, in the center along the midline, we have a palatal implant. Now, what's the purpose of palatal implant? It is for absolute anchorage. That is 100% space utilization. That is a, uh, uh, more than the group anchorage. This is for critical anchorage cases where the TPA... Uh, the implant is used or uh, tads are used. You can see that uh, this is being used to intrude the molar. Yeah, so you got modifications of TPA, multiple modifications can be made. It just goes up according to imagination. You can always create new modifications. You can see that this um, arm has another welded distal unit on both the sides and these are these are attached to lingual buttons on the maxillary molar so it's exerting a intrusive force and at the same time i don't think this is the only implant that is there in this case i think there must be an implant on both the palatal sorry on both the uh, buckle left and the right side because we know that if you just exert intrusive force along the palatal line we'll have molar tipping palatally we don't want that to exert a true intrusive force we need force from the palatal side as well as from a buccal side so by exerting palatal force here and palatal force here we are intruding the maxillary molar so what is the problem with tpa we know that tpa has so many uses but still there are some drawbacks first of all we already know that tpa cannot be used for a group a anchorage it can only be used for a group b anchorage so that's one problem anchorage potential is not good it is okay -ish. something is better than nothing so we rather use a tpa than not doing anything at all but if you can try to do something else try to use some other means of anchorage reinforcement maybe you can use a tad you can use an implant that is or maybe you can use headgear along with the tpa do not use do not rely completely on the tpa it's not a good idea next is tongue ulcers palatal tissue damage if you are uh, if your uh, TPA is extremely away from the uh, from the palatal surface then it starts impinging on the lingual surface on the tongue and you get a, a TPA loop shape impression on the tongue surface okay it causes ulceration to the tongue and it's not comfortable for the patient so that's the problem with the ex excessively uh, um, excessively away TPAs TPAs which are distant from the palate so try to keep it within two to three millimeter from the palatal surface and if extrusive force intrusive forces are required don't keep it more than five mm away this is particularly important if the patient has a large tongue another risk with having a tpa is that you can have a palatal impingement say one possibility is that maybe the tongue forces are so extreme that you know uh the TPA gets pushed against the palatal surface or maybe the TPA, TPA is a um, banded type of TPA and it gets dislodged from its Mershon's attachment. Even in such cases, you can end up with a TPA getting completely embedded in the palatal surface. Again, in some cases, you may have to uh, place an incision to remove the TPA because it gets it becomes a part of the palate if the patient has missed appointments and patient hasn't come to you patient may be completely unaware and the TPA can get embedded with the palatal surface. So that's another complication. And of course, aspiration. This happens only in case of a dislodged TPA. If you have a bonded TPA or even if you have a banded TPA and the TPA gets dislodged from one of its attachments, this can occur.
so to make sure we uh, make up for these disadvantages there are different ways as far as the anchorage loss is concerned we can cope up by by using combinations that is you can use tpa along with an implant you can use tpa along with a headgear to increase the anchorage value of the tpa as far as the tongue is concerned try not to give it in patients with a large tongue it's better because if you have a large tongue there's a risk that you know some amount of force will be continuously exerted on the the loop of the tpa and it gets impeded so don't give it in patients who have large tongues then palatal impingement do not keep do not include excessive uh, do not add uh, unnecessary active forces within the tpa because there is a risk of palatal impingement and aspiration well try to stick to either uh, uh, banded tpas or welded tpas or solder tpas if you are using banded tpas make sure that you have the loop and the ligature wire well embedded i always try to double ligate it that is i engage a o ring and uh, another thing what i do is i use a stainless steel ligature so i do both so just in case one breaks at least the other is holding the free end of the tpa uh, the free end of the tpa into the mushroom's attachment there are so many modifications but i just chose to speak about some of them particularly actually i want to talk about the zacrosens modification we'll get to that now so this is one modification so this you can see that it's a welded type of a tpa beautifully made you can see the sheen and the class of the supplants you cannot take your eyes off it it's so beautifully made and the shining you can see the welding that's been done and the sorting that's been done it's um it's uh, it's flawless the soldering is beautifully done here i can see here beautifully done here now um yeah so getting back to uh, the tpa so you can see that in the center there's a hole and this is done to place the transpalatal uh, sorry temporary anchorage device so in this case it's already been planned to use a temporary anchorage device and that's the reason why the hole is kept so that's the, so as to engage the implant and there are also anterior welded wires or uh, soldered wires and this is done to engage elastics okay so this is one example of anchor tad uh, usage along with the tpa yes i agree that we do not have the characteristic loop of the tpa which is usually extending distally but this is a modification of a tpa before we get to this i want to talk about the classic tpa the moment we talk about tpa i just draw a tpa on regular tpa on this side so we know that there is a bend there is a loop this tally again a bend here yeah yes so we know that is your regular tpa this is how a regular tpa looks now regular tpa is also called as goshgerian uh, palatal arch because it was given by robert goshgerian and it is made of o36 inches stainless steel wire which is rounded cross section this is a feature of a regular transpalatal arch so the moment you see a tpa you are talking about goshgerian the goshgerian type of transpalatal arch also called as goshgerian arch or goshgerian appliance okay now there is a modification of this the modification of this appliance is uh, okay on the right you can see a zacrosens type of palatal arch how is this appliance different from this appliance well clearly the loop is extending anteriorly and you can see that there is one big loop which is extending anteriorly and two small loops which are extending distally very similar to goshgerian appliance okay but the amount of wire that is incorporated within the zacrosens palatal arch is more it should be around 89 mm the total length of the wire incorporated is about 89 mm so you got a central large loop which is directed mesially and you got distal loop two distal loops which are directed distally and the width of this um, uh, of this loop is around 9 mm sorry 12 mm the width is 12 mm and the length is around 9 mm whereas in case of goshgerian appliance the width is 
around just a second yeah it's around six millimeter whereas the length length is seven millimeter okay so you have got a six by seven instead we have got double the length which is 12 and slightly more uh, double the width which is 12 and slightly more length which is 9 mm and each of this is around two to three millimeter in diameter the small Oh, the smaller loops are about two to three three millimeters in diameters. Now, what's the advantage of this? We know that larger larger length of wire is incorporated to make a Zachrison's arch. By doing this, you have milder force, you have lesser loss of force, low low diffraction rate is lesser, so you're having lesser amount of force which is lost within the TPA. So you don't have to repeatedly activate it. You can just activate it after every six weeks or seven weeks whereas the regular tba has to be activated every three or four weeks so a zacharson's arch is considered to be a better form of a goshkarian appliance so it applies more milder forces it exert more exerts more of intrusive force when compared to your regular goshkarian appliance there's another type of arch palatal arch which is the burst on arch now how is it different from yeah yeah so here instead of having so instead of having a motionless attachment you'll have a bracket like how you have a edge wise bracket so you'll have bracket on the left and bracket on the right and within that will be your tpa and this tpa will just run horizontally along the palatal concavity but horizontally without any loop and it, the cross section of this TBA will not be rounded. Both Koshkarian and Zachrison use a rounded wire whereas in case of a Burston's palatal arch uh, the, the, uh, the wire is rectangular in cross section. Okay, So wire is rectangular in cross section and it's usually made of a TMA wire. You get it. I cannot write it. Okay, so the TMA wire is used in a Boston's palatal arch. Another difference between Goshkarian and a Zacharyson's palatal arch is the Zacharyson's arch uses a blue LG alloy, whereas the Goshkarian uses a stainless steel wire. Okay. Now, this is another modification of a palatal arch. You can see that along with the regular uh, uh, U loop and over here, we have two hook like things which have been created within the within the palatal wire itself so no additional attachments are required this is done in addition to your your buccal implant so instead of using three implants like we have seen in the first case where you know there was one implant here and one implant over here and here the entire procedure will be carried out only with the help of two implants that is one over buccal one over buccal so we got two implants and the third implant is not used just a palatal arch is used. So the E chain will be extended from the molar till this hook, similarly molar till this hook, and at the same time from this implant to buccal tube, this implant to the buccal tube. So you're exerting a vertical intrusive force without using three implants. Yes, it will not be as strong and as effective as three implants, but still it is much better than using just a TPA. Right. So coming to the evidence, what do we know? What has been told so far? Now, coming to this article, which is by Golner and Engwal, and they found that for unilateral cross by correction, TBA is very good. And they found that some amount of extrusion does take place, but it is kind of compensated by intrusive force of occlusion and some amount of vertical growth that take place. They have not really figured out if it is the intrusive force of occlusion or it is the vertical growth of the patient that compensates or prevents extrusion of the molar. But they found that yes, TPA for cross pipe correction is useful. What they did is, is they used a small, medium and large uh, size of palatal arches, 39, 45 and 51 arch millimeter arch sizes and they found that the small TPAs are not very useful for uh, uh, for cross pipe correction. They found that the size 3, that is the 51 millimeter uh, TPAs are more beneficial for correction of cross bites because the smaller wires showed more amount of horizontal forces. Okay, so they, they showed undesirable forces to a greater extent 
and the uh, beneficial forces of a large TPA was much better. And uh, yeah, so next. Yeah, so we have another study which was done by Zablocki. I think this was in European Journal of Orthodontics 2008. And they compared the effectiveness of TPA, headgear, and implants. And they found that uh, how uh, they found how useful is uh, are all these appliances during the alignment leveling and space closure phase of treatment. They found that both temporary anchorage device and headgear were very efficient during alignment and leveling, but TPA showed some amount of anchorage loss even during alignment and leveling stage. About one millimeter of extra of extraction space was lost. Whereas during space closure, temporary anchorage device showed only 2% loss of anchorage. That is almost 98% of space was utilized. So it's, it is critical anchorage. It is absolute anchorage that you get with TAD. It is proven. And then with headgears, they found that you lose about 15% uh, of anchorage space. So again, headgear is quite useful in a group A anchorage case, which can be clearly seen in this study. And they found that during space closure, TPA loses 54% of the anchorage space. So imagine losing 54% of anchorage space. It's unimaginable. It's like too much. So that's the reason why for a group B anchorage, TPA is very useful. Whereas group A, forget about it. There were other studies, there were also other publications, like uh, there was this study which was uh, done to compare. This was this is a quite a detailed study. I encourage you to read this article. It's an extensive article, but it uses uh, the Burstone 6 geometries to explain how TPA force application is very complex. You may think that you are applying some amount of mesial rotation and some amount of distal rotation forces. And yes, the tooth will be rotated or uh, it will uh, rotate, but not really. Some amount of uh, un uncalculated movements can take place. So you have to be very careful uh, when you incorporate these bands. Do not apply excessive forces because they found that first order actuations can be done within the TPA, but then it is not predictable. The results are not predictable. So you have to be very careful when these uh, when these bends are placed within the wire. Now coming to this study which was done by Samira and uh, Flares and Saltaji Flores Mir and others and they found that uh, TPA is not useful for N mass retraction, not useful for even two step retraction. To some extent you can use it for a single tooth retraction, maybe for a single canine retraction, then maybe it is useful. Otherwise, not really. So basically what they found was that if you're using TPA for anchorage, don't use it alone and you have to use it in combination with other methods. You can use it with a headgear or you can use it with a tamp uh, TAD, but don't use it alone. So I hope you've learned something about TPA today. If you have learned a thing or two about TPA, then please like share and subscribe if you did not like this presentation please unlike the presentation and if you have any suggestions please drop them in the comment section below thank you for staying till the end until the next lecture goodbye